Welcome to the new Mercedes-Benz S-Class, one of the most luxurious cars in the automotive world, and for many decades, the taxi of choice for VIPs across the globe. This latest model, the W223, has had a major overhaul in every area. And in this review, we're gonna see what impact these changes have on a car that in its previous generation lost its crown as best luxury limo to the Audi A8. First, let's run through exactly what's new. Starting with the looks. Now the new S-Class has been thoroughly redesigned, but it still has familiar smooth surfacing and understated sculpting, but it's the grille that is very different. Now it's not quite so overtly controversial as BMW's latest efforts, but it's still certainly very big. Just like the car itself, the new S-Class is bigger all round than the one that came before it. You can buy a short wheelbase version or one of these long wheelbase versions. And this car is actually more than 5.3 meters long. The distance between the front wheels and the rear wheels is 3.2 meters, which is almost big enough to fit a Kia Picanto in you still get the three-pointed star sitting proudly on the bonnet. And this is the only Mercedes product to offer it in the lineup. And if you're worried about bending it or accidentally damaging it, then don't worry because there's a bit of flex in it. At the back, there's new horizontally mounted tail lights which stretch into the boot lid. And that's a first for the S-Class. Another first for the S-Class, flush door handles. Now these are standard on every model in the UK and they pop out as you approach the car with the key or just when you manually unlock it. The headlights are actually slimmer than they were before and now as standard every S-Class in the UK gets what Mercedes calls digital light. So it's basically made up of three main LEDs which through refraction create a resolution of 1.3 million pixels per headlight and they can even project things onto the road itself but because of current legislation in the UK you're not actually allowed to do that. And also they're very bright. Now, if you've been a big fan of the previous S-Class Cabriolet or the S-Class Coupe, then I've got some bad news for you because those body styles are not gonna be reintroduced for this latest generation of the S-Class. With Mercedes' big push towards electrification, it's stretching the budget pretty thin, so there just isn't the business justification to bring those body styles back. In the old S-Class, the biggest alloys you could get were 20 inches, but now with the new model, you can have these massive 21 inch alloys. And on lesser trims, you get 20 inches or 19 inches. Now, there is loads to discuss in here because you've got a very different layout from before. So now there's this 12.8 inch touchscreen infotainment system which is centrally mounted and rises up from the center console here and you've also got this 12.3 inch digital driver display very different from the kind of dual screen layout that mercedes products have been using of late and i wonder where mercedes got their inspiration from for this infotainment system anyway we're going to talk about the tech later first let's discuss the quality because Mercedes products of the last few years, a few of them have been released with a really premium look inside and a premium price tag, but the build quality has been a bit of a letdown in some of the products. But with the S-Class, there's no problem here. This is a real step up for Mercedes. So the feeling of robustness throughout the interior is especially pleasing and the materials just feel excellent, especially this leather. It's Nappa leather, which is standard on all S-Classes. You've got a choice of three different colors as well, and it's a no cost option to go for those different colors, which is good. And it just feels so soft and luxurious. And I especially like the steering wheel, which is quite chunky. So in a similar way to a BMW steering wheel, but it's still really soft. It's almost like you're steering with a pillow. But the other great thing about this interior is that it really comes alive at night. So you've got 250 LEDs inside for the ambient interior lighting. And it really makes it look like a sort of Blade Runner futuristic spaceship that you're in. And you've got 10 different color schemes, 64 different colors, and it all adds up to something that just feels really special and luxurious. And unsurprisingly, there's loads of new tech too. So when you get in the car, it can recognize you via your fingerprint, your voice, or by facial recognition. Then it loads up your driver profile, which has your driving position, favorite radio station, and various other settings set up for you. Which is cool, and it's not common in cars, but phones have been able to do fingerprint and facial recognition stuff like this for ages. So it's a bit of a gimmick rather than something truly groundbreaking. In fact, it does get a bit annoying having to log in. So you'll probably just turn it off. 
This digital driver display is brilliant. You've got these steering wheel controls to choose some different layouts for it. But if you go to the menu, you can also adjust the head up display. And it's one of the best head up displays out there. This one comes with a really cool augmented reality function, which you can see we're on a roundabout now and it's showing me what exit I need to take as if it's projecting the directions onto the road itself. So it's not that exit, not that exit, but this exit which is really cool. It takes a bit of getting used to, but it can genuinely be quite helpful. And even without all the augmented reality stuff, this is a really, really good head-up display unit because it's really big, gives you loads of information, but not in an overwhelming kind of way. And it's great that you've still got a choice of different layouts. So you can have a really simple one, and then you can have the all singing, all dancing one with augmented reality. Although that's only available on the top two trims of the long wheelbase S-Class but you can't have that function with Google Maps or Waze. Anyway, back to the driver display. This bottom menu lets you cycle through some different layouts and they're all really, really good. The display itself, it's fantastic. It's massive, beautiful graphics, really, really crisp. These steering wheel controls, not quite so great because some of them are physical buttons you have to press, but then others you have to swipe. So you can sort of be accidentally doing things as you touch a steering wheel, which isn't exactly ideal, but still. One of the layouts you can choose for the digital driver display is a new 3D one. So it uses two screens, which independently target your right and left eyes to create this 3D effect. It makes me feel a little bit sick. So I'll be sticking to the 2D screens. So it's a bit of a gimmick, but I guess fairly cool to have. You get a fantastic driving position in the new S-Class electrically adjustable steering wheel, of course. And something that is a bit strange for the new model is that Mercedes have gone for these door mounted seat adjustment buttons. But in the previous S-Class, when you pressed it, this whole plastic button would move as you press it. But now it doesn't, it stays where it is, even though the seat is moving. So it feels a bit like maybe it's broken there. Obviously it isn't. And it does mean it's a little bit awkward, especially if you wanna adjust the headrest, just to grab the thing. As for the infotainment system, well, the graphics are really sharp and the system is responsive, but it's mounted relatively low on the dashboard. So quite often you have to take your eyes away from the road to operate it. The trackpad and rotary dial from before have been ditched, which is a shame. Yes, there's a voice command system to help operate features, but it's a bit inconsistent and often very frustrating. But what is cool is that the system works from any seat in the car. Hey Mercedes. How may I help you? You can see that it lights up these LEDs here to show that it recognises who's talking in that particular seat, which is a nice touch. But ultimately, even with this voice command stuff, the infotainment in the BMW 7 Series with its high mounted screen and fantastically useful rotary dial is better than this. There's still lots of good things about the S-Class tech though. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are standard and look at the cameras. This has got to be the best car camera system around. You've got so many different views. You can move the angles around yourself on the screen and it's cinematic quality. It is properly impressive and very useful. The space in the back is ridiculously generous. It's even bigger than it was before. Not by much, but still anyone of any shape or any size should be able to get really really comfortable back here and it's especially nice having these padded headrests as well and you've still got the adjustment here with these weird buttons that you think might move but don't move and generally it just feels very calming massively spacious and extremely luxurious now while you can have loads of luxury and kit in the back of the s-class the car we're in isn't actually specced up to show off absolutely everything you can get so you can have a tablet and rear screens and massaging seats but you'll need to go for the range topping executive models to get all of that the new s-class also has airbags that deploy from the back of the front seats but we're not going to be testing them today the boot is massive at 550 liters it's 20 liters bigger even than it was before and it's not like the s-class has ever had a particularly small boot there are a few practical limitations so you can't fold down the rear seats but it does still have a ski hatch to mean that you can put extra long items through there and because it's a saloon rather than a hatchback it means it does naturally have a slightly narrow not very tall opening at the front here and there's also quite a big lip too but still for a limo this is an extremely practical boot. So what's the S-Class like on the road? Let's talk engines first, and the range kicks off with this S350D. 
It's a 2.9 litre straight six with 282 brake horsepower and a 0 to 62 mile per hour time of 6.4 seconds. There's also a more powerful S400D, which is a second quicker in the same sprint. These diesels are expected to take up the bulk of sales in the UK, but there's a very impressive S500 petrol too. It gets 429 brake horsepower, covers 0 to 62 in 4.9 seconds, and offers really punchy, smooth performance. And of course, proper hardened AMG versions will follow in the future. But for now, this S350D is a very good engine. It's not rapid or amazingly impressive, but it's just really smooth. There's plenty of power for overtakes and it ticks a lot of boxes. It's very good indeed, but it could be a little quieter and the stop start system again that could be a bit smoother in here you haven't got any mild hybrid tech to help smooth that out which is a bit of a shame so if you're spending this much money on a car maybe you'd want a little bit more refinement in those areas there's some noticeable road roar inside this interior as well so you can't quite hear a pin drop but it is still very quiet by the standards of most cars on the road now, what about the ride? Probably the most important part of the new S-Class. Well, every model that you choose gets adaptive air suspension and it has a really nice, floaty, wafty, cushion feel to it, but it's still really well controlled as well. It isn't perfect though. Yes, while the high-speed ride is exemplary, the broken edges of potholes can cause a little bit more of a thump than you'd feel in an Audi A8, especially at town speeds. It's still comfier than a BMW 7 Series though. And the handling? Well, do you really want to be pushing a car like this to its limits because it's built for comfort and luxury, isn't it? Well, the truth is actually, if you do want to drive it quite hard, then it is fairly rewarding because this is a very capable car. There's a lot of grip and the steering has a really reassuring heft to it. And it's really precise as well. So you can put that three-pointed star exactly where you want it to go. And it is a really nice thing to try and hustle along. And actually you can have quite a lot of fun driving this S-Class hard. But really what it's built for is smoothness, luxury, and especially that low speed ease of smooth stopping. So the control weights are absolutely fantastic. So by that I mean the brake pedal basically has a telepathic link to your brain. So it knows exactly how much pressure you want to exert and exactly the force you want to use. So stopping smoothly in this car is absolutely effortless. The driving experience is likely to become even better in the future with the addition of yet more tech on this car. There's a camera-based predictive e-active body control suspension and four-wheel steering on the way, while mild hybrid and plug-in hybrid versions will be joining the lineup too. And the price for all this? Well, in the realm of luxury limos, you can never really describe anything as cheap. The range starts from £80,000 and currently goes up to more than £110,000. But expect the ultra-luxurious Maybach and performance-focused AMG versions to go significantly higher than that. The A8 and 7 Series are a bit cheaper, for what it's worth. But you do get a lot for your money with the S-Class, in terms of equipment at least. Entry-level AMG line models get 19-inch alloys, keyless entry and start, heated front and rear seats, four-zone climate control, Nappa leather, and soft-closed doors. But we'd recommend upping to AMG Line Premium because then you can opt for the long wheelbase with electrically operated and ventilated rear seats. It also adds 20-inch alloys, an upgraded sound system, and a panoramic sunroof. And it also gets a self-parking system. And there's even something to move the car into and out of a space with just your phone. Right, let's see how good or not, the self-parking system is now. It's available on every S-Class apart from the short wheelbase AMG line entry-level model. So to activate it, we want to press this button down here and we want to click on parking assistance. So then it says drive forwards and now it's spotted. So I want to go in that one. And then to start it, you've got to push this button again down here. So then here we go. I'm not touching the pedals at all, going forwards. Straightening it up, we've done it. So that's pretty impressive. And with a car this big, you're very grateful for any extra help when parking. So the new S-Class is packed to the rafters with technology, some more useful than others. It's also very comfortable, gorgeous inside, and fantastically spacious and relaxing for rear seat passengers. How does it really compare to the 7 Series and A8? Well, subscribe to our channel to find out because we will be putting those cars head to head with the new S-Class very soon. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, go to whatcar.com to save thousands of pounds off your next new car.